It, it has been an incredible week, and I could not be prouder to be here in Philadelphia and accept the request of a spectacular public servant, Hillary Clinton, to accept my party's nomination to be vice president. I, sh I, shared, I shared the other night at the convention how kind of weird I feel being here. I mean, I just grew up in such a non-political household. My dad ran this union organized iron worker shop, and mom and dad are here somewhere in this room. They're 81 years old, and we're having a great time together. And I, and I don't know if there's any Irish Americans here, but they're standing with a buddy. They're standing with a buddy from County Cork, Padraig Fleming, who flew over to surprise me. So look, we're, we're here as strong family, all of us. Uh, we worked in my dad's business, my mom and my brothers and me, and pitched in. That's what family businesses do. I know a lot of you come from that. When family says, you got to help, you got to help. And we like helping. I learned a lot from working for my dad. I learned a lot from a Jesuit high school I went to that taught. Wow. Jesuits aren't that big an applause line in every city, but I'm glad, I'm glad to know in Philadelphia. I'm glad to know in Philadelphia. I bet there were a lot of Pope Francis Catholics here before there was a Pope Francis. But, but those values of, of hard work and a faith were my guiding principles, and that's one of the reasons that I developed such an admiration and friendship for Hillary Clinton, because those are the same values that has driven her, her growing up in a small business household, her growing up inspired by a Methodist youth pastor. Those are her values, and, um, and she's been living them, fighting for kids and families, putting them first for her entire career, her entire career. In, in my own life, from my parents, and I took the lessons from the Jesuits that I worked with as a missionary in Honduras, and I basically decided to do what virtually all of you guys are doing, which is to measure what I do by how it helps somebody else. Can you serve others? Can you do good for others? It's not about title. It's not about money. It's not about prestige. It's not about popularity. It's not about anything other than serving other people people. And that's the kind of candidate we have. So we're starting today this, um, this bus tour. Now this is the part of the campaign I really like. I mean, you know, the big, the big events are fun, but I don't like wearing a tie that much. So I'd rather, I'd rather just go out and pound the pavement. And so we're starting a three-day bus tour today. And this is the first rally, and then we're going to go, and it's no accident, this is the first rally, and, and then we're going to go across Pennsylvania, and we're going to go across Iowa, and Secretary Clinton is going to be laying out while she's going to be such a fantastic president, a fantastic president. We're going to be drawing that contrast between Hillary Clinton's plans for our country and Donald Trump's empty promises and no plans for the country. You, 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 know, you know her plans. I mean, I don't know, is there anybody at uh, Temple that likes the idea of debt-free college? I mean, yeah. She has pledged in the first 100 days of the administration to make a massive investment in new jobs, education, work training, rebuilding our nation's infrastructure, fighting the battles that she has fought time and time again. And it's not just about what she says, it's that she's delivered. I know you watched last night as she talked about, and, 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 
And, and as Chelsea talked about, her battling to get health insurance for 8 million American kids when she was first lady. Now, don't you want, don't you want a president who knows how to battle and get things done for regular people who might not be able to get those things done without a great champion? Of course you do. Of course you do. So that's what we'll do over the next couple of days. We'll talk about creating jobs. We'll talk about raising wages. We'll talk about the leadership that America needs to play in the world, a leadership that's got to be based on alliances and, and building bridges and, and, and just using the relationships we have to defeat forces of terrorism and forces of prejudice, forces of anti-Semitism. We can do that when we work together around the world. And finally, and finally, and in some ways this is the thing that matters the most to me as a former civil rights lawyer, that we want to make sure that we've got a community of respect. Uh, right? A, or, or as the civil rights leaders used to say, a beloved community where, where people are not demeaned because of who they are, not, not, not dissed because they're somebody with a disability or they're LGBT or they come from another country or their skin color is different or they speak a different language, but embraced. Hey, don't you guys in Pennsylvania call yourself a commonwealth just like we in Virginia do? You know, just like we in Virginia do? That's different than saying you're a state. Anybody who says we're a commonwealth, what you are saying is the wealth we hold, we hold in common. It's got to be about everybody. It's got to be about bringing everybody together. And those are Hillary Clinton's values. Now, the last thing I'll say before we bring up our champion and the main event is uh, I've noticed there's a few differences between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Now, let's see. What's today? What's today? Friday? I, I think I can... Well, I'm going to try to boil it down. Um, you've seen Trump basically pitch in a very dark and negative convention in Cleveland a very different view of this country. Weren't you proud of how optimistic, upbeat, positive, pro-America the convention was here and the message of our candidate? Absolutely. 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 The Republican convention was like a twisted and negative tour. It wasn't a tour of this country. It was a journey through Donald Trump's mind, and that is a very frightening place. That is a very frightening place. When it comes to the economy, we're at a college. We're at a college. Can I ask you a question? In Hillary, we got a you're hired president. Would you rather have that or a you're fired president? Absolutely. That's not that hard. That's not that hard. In, in, in Hillary, you got a bridge builder. Would you rather have that or have a trash talker? A bridge builder, right? A bridge builder. And in Hillary, you've got that character from before she was ever in office that puts kids and families first. This is really important. This is really important. If you want to know about trustworthiness and character of somebody in public life, Look to see. We trust Hillary. Alright, he got to the punchline. He got to the punchline. He got to the punchline. <laughs> I like you. I like you. Alright. Alright, now look. If you want to know how you can view somebody in public life, look to see if they had a passion before they got in office and whether they have continued that passion consistently throughout their entire time. And you know that Hillary Clinton, in good times and tough times, in victory and defeat, through hell or high water, in office or out of office since she was a teenager, has been putting kids and families first. And you also know that Donald Trump has had a passion 